hold music. You want to avoid it, and so do your customers. So say goodbye to hold music and hello to faster, smarter support with Salesforce. Make service more personal and agents more productive using built-in trusted AI. Then watch costs and wait times drop and satisfaction soar. Support customers in a whole new way with Service GPT. Learn how at salesforce.com slash service GPT. Like me, do you get stuck worrying about your business's finances or what needs to be paid to the ATO, employees, super funds, and so on? The Australian Business Podcast is proud to announce that our sponsor, Grace Base Advisory is offering all business owners a financial health check. Jordan and Daniel's expert team of accountants will conduct a review of your tax structure, bank setup, ATO obligations and reporting, as well as business insurance, and provide some advice on how to manage all of this. But get this, it's just $99. No matter where you are in Australia, you can book a $99 health check with the Grace Base team following the link in your podcast player. It's a no-brainer. Tell them Owen sent you. Welcome to RASK's Australian Business Podcast, a series for entrepreneurs who dare to leave the world in a better place and get paid while we do it. This podcast will make you a better business owner, investor, founder, or entrepreneur. If you want to start a business or already have one, please subscribe to the series or share it with your friends, business partner, or colleagues. And don't forget to consider taking our free business course, which includes heaps of templates for creating business plans, HR documents, employee files, all of my software recommendations, and more. The course is completely free and available via the link in your podcast player. Okay, let's get into the episode. Welcome back to the Australian Business Podcast. I'm joined by Jordan and Daniel from Grace Space Advisory. How are you guys going? Good. Yeah. You said that like perfectly. Yeah. In unison. In sync. We (laughs) spend too much time together. That's That's why. When you're like co-founders or co-business owners, you just get each other. It's just like one of those things. So today we're talking about the three biggest money wasters in business. So one thing we like to do on the show is help you out by giving you some ideas and strategies and tips and whatever. We can also tell you what not to do. And then hopefully that can help you avoid making these common mistakes and uh, be more profitable. So I asked these guys, thought this was a good topic. And I think it's a good topic. And they sent through some stuff in advance. So I've got privileged information here, guys. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay, Jordan, go for it. So what we see in small business when they're starting and they start to make money and they start to become more profitable is lifestyle creeps in. (laughs) So, you know, they'll start turning over more money, being more profitable and the mindset's like, oh, I can buy that shiny thing now. Yeah. I can, whatever, whatever the shiny object is, Mm -hmm. it's really important as a business owner to be able to identify that and stay the course to put that money back into the business and not just buy the the next new shiny object that comes up. Mm. Is there like a thing that always creeps up? I think in the previous episode, we talked about jet skis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's like a personal use item, but do people do that in business, their business accounts as well? Yeah, you see a lot of luxury cars. Luxury cars is probably up there with some of the first things people look to buying. So they try and buy it for the business. They try and buy it in the business, but there's, you can't buy personal luxury cars in the business. There's there's tax repercussions. Yeah, that's right. You know, from fringe benefits tax to the motor vehicle cost limit, like there's no benefit to spending $200,000 for a vehicle in the business. What's the the motor vehicle cost limit? What you said? Yeah, the motor vehicle cost limit. It varies every year. Don't, it varies every single year. It changes. But like, what's it roughly? About 57,000, under 60,000. Well, what about if like one of those, like a tradie has like a Hilux or a Ranger? Different. That's commercial in nature, right? So you can actually get utility vehicles, vans, trucks, commercial vehicles. And as long as they're towing over three and a half ton, they're treated as commercial and like plant and equipment, not just a motor vehicle. So that rule doesn't apply to those vehicles. Three and a half tons. So I need to go and get an F-250 that's like $4,000 a week on petrol. (laughs) (laughs) Six other cars. That's right. That's right. But- an SUV or a sedan mm. or a little coupe, you, you just can't put into the business. You know, you can claim some of the business usage because it is still going to be used for business, but we recommend putting it into your personal return and, and claim the expenses accordingly, according to a logbook within your personal return. So say, for example, if I had a business and I wanted to buy, I don't know, like a like a new Kia, I don't even know what cars are worth, but say it's $65,000. It's not a ute though. K 
can I buy that for the business or not? Yeah, you, you can always buy it for the business with the business. Sometimes people need to buy it in the business for whether it's if they're financing it and they need the serviceability from the business to buy it. But there's just separate tax repercussions that comes from that. So you need to actually have a private usage apportionment to it. So And that'll come down to having to sort of pay that back to the company as well. There needs to be a contribution back to the company for the usage as well. It gets pretty technical. Otherwise, you're paying what's called fringe benefits tax. But you could pay fringe benefits tax? Yeah. And so, you know how there's like the instant... I'm just putting you guys... Just getting free uh, tax advice here. So, say, for example, if there was uh, a car... You know how people... Or what, the thing... You know, we talked about this in the recent episode, how people were like, oh, I heard this thing at the pub. Like, people always come up to me, they're like, oh, you can buy this thing and it's instant asset write-off. And it's like gone way up recently. Yeah. Well, there's no... At the moment, it's called temporary full expensing and there's no real limit and... That's where at the moment you're more or less claiming assets in full the financial year that you purchase it. Yeah. So you could say buy a hundred thousand dollar car. Can you do that and then write it up? If it's a year, only up to fifty seven thousand. Yeah. Okay. Un- unless it's so a that's the separate tax treatment you're talking about. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So you can still claim it. You'll claim the full fifty seven thousand with a private usage onto it as well, not the full hundred thousand that you bought it for. So there's still, you know, that forty odd thousand extra you've spent. That needs to get treated somehow, right? That's personal. That's almost like ripping $40,000 out of the business and using it personally. It's the Mm. same tax treatment. How about then, because this is like one of the big money wasters. So I'm trying to like play the persons on the other side, asking all the questions. So this is where people get caught out. What about then like if I was to buy a Ranger, like a Ford Ranger U, it's like 70, 80 grand, I don't know what they cost, but let's say, and I'm driving it on weekends, but it's not for business use. You know what I mean? What do you mean by that? So like it's a the company owns the Ute, but I'm driving it on weekends to pick my kids up from soccer or something like that. Yeah, it was actually funny. I think it was maybe five or six years ago. The ATO went to was it Moore Park in Sydney? Yeah, it was or, one of the footy games. Yeah, really? Yeah, and they were because same example. They were seeing that all these Utes that were being claimed for 100 percent business use, and they <laughs> would go and see it. I think it was the football, the, the AF, the rugby league, or the AFL. And then they would see the number plates and like do a cross check. And match them up. Yeah. And see like if they weren't putting a private use portion on it, they would get audited. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's just accountants pub talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I remember hearing that story. It, and it's definitely, like, it definitely happened. Yeah. It definitely happened. They yeah. definitely went to a sporting event of some sort that had multiple cars and were looking for vehicles registered under a business doing personal things and then – Obviously, they can't check everyone. There would have been so many businesses affected by this. <laughs> so they'd probably handpick a couple and yeah. check, is there a private usage here? Because technically, you should be putting a, a private usage to it because it's not business-related. Mm. Deductions come that for expenses that directly relate to generating income. Okay. So that's like the standout tradey example. What about if I'm, say – a PT and I have a home gym that I do like a studio where I have people coming into the shed and we're doing whatever, what could I do with electricity? You've got to apportion it. So you can claim you can claim it, but only the portion that's used for the business. So it's like a five like room house. So I've got like a garage that I use and it's for the business. How do you think about that? the square meter rate? So you find out what the square meter rate of sort of the house is. You know. Okay then you apply what the square meter is of the business portion of it and that's the percentage you claim. So it could be 5, 10, 15% and that's the business-related portion that you would claim. Mm. Okay. Does this risk or like the biggest money wasters in a business, does this apply to people like taking too much money as well or is that kind of a totally different thing? Is that like it's not really a waste of money, is it? Or usually people take it to waste it. They're not sort of taking it for the sake of taking it. They're usually taking it to spend. Yeah. It's again the opportunity cost. Like if you were to go and buy something, whether it's a car or whatever it may be, you could have used that money to that episode we had before to scale, to spend on more staff, better staff, advertising. So I think it can be a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's one of the big money wasters is personal expenditure, like not just paying yourself excessive amounts to buy something, which also comes with a shed load 
of withholding tax. Yeah. Oh, if you've ever yeah. tried to pay yourself a bonus in zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're doing it through wages, yeah. you're going to go, what? I'm not even <laughs> going to, what's the point? <laughs> it honestly is, right? Like you're like, holy moly. If you're in the, yeah, if you're in the top marginal tax bracket and you're doing that in zero payroll, yeah. Shock of your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, that's something. And then also just even just, by the sounds of it, buying things which may have personal use, that could have serious tax implications. Like you might think, oh yeah, it's a new ute and I'm going to use it on the weekend to go fishing. Well, yeah, I mean, you might get away with it and then trigger an audit and then that's like, oh no. But um, yeah, cool. By the way, for anyone that's listening to this for the first time and doesn't know what that means, is that like audits? Is that like, what happens? Well, audits are a very extreme sort of case. Usually it's a review. The ATO likes to do a quick review of an account for whatever topic it may be, they might want to do a GST review. They'll send you a letter, please send us documents X, Y, Z. They'll quickly go over it. If you send it within a time frame, they're happy with it, they tick it off, finished. Audits arise when there's more or less the ATO that are pretty confident that you've done something wrong. Yeah. And what would that involve? Like what from the from the business's perspective, what would they have to produce or do? It depends what type of audit it is, because there's so many different ones like a one of the most common ones that I've gone through is like a super annuation audit. I mean, like you prov- they'll, they'll say, if, if you haven't paid the super, they'll come and say, look, give us your bank statements, your payroll records, employee declaration forms, and they'll cross-check everything. And if, if their figure is different to yours, it's why. Why is it different? Mm. Or- That's where record keeping becomes really, really important yeah. because it's a record cross-check. That's what an audit really is. They're checking that what you're reporting is actually what's happening. Mm. Okay. So that's um, personal expenditures is the biggest money waster there. Numero two, who's on for number two? Yeah, I, I can have a chat about this one. It's not making the fast, hard decisions. So that's where, again, plays into that strategy and knowing, having that plan when you're a business owner and it's sort of understanding what your goals are, what points sort of indicating that you're hitting your targets, you're not hitting targets, you're heading in the right direction, you're not hitting, heading in the right direction. And again, playing on that sort of that pivoting skill that business mm-hmm. owners need to have to be able to pivot their strategies and plans towards sort of areas that are, are working, sort of understanding where you're going with it. So I think, Jordan, you said before, like with the hiring, one of the things that I, I said well, a few episodes ago was like, how that, you know, I struggle to like make decisions with employees because it's a, I see it as like a really big like personal thing. But you were like, there's this kind of like cliche. I can't remember what you said. It was higher, slow and fire fast. Yeah, yeah. Higher, slow, that's fire, the one. Fast. Yeah. yeah. So the idea being that you want to hire slowly so that you can get good people into the business and not make mistakes. But then when they're not working out, just get rid of them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to. Otherwise, the more you put it off because it's a, shit conversation and you don't want to have that conversation with someone, the more it would cost you and it can be detrimental to your business. Because you might actually like the person. Yeah, there might not be an issue well. with the personality or the person. It's the result that's the problem. Yeah. And it's not always the employee sold either. It could be the business isn't doing that well and you need to cut back, remodel, reset your plans, mm. you know, change a few things in the organisational structure. And having that conversation can be really difficult, especially with people that you can almost call friends now. Yeah, that's what's so hard in a small business. You become friends with them, right? Did I tell you guys I ended up in hospital once from this? Really? Yeah. yeah. So they didn't like attack me or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was attack. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, I'm going to get the exact date wrong, but I think it was January 14th, two years ago. Maybe it was 2020 or 2021. I ended up in hospital and I had to get this stuff put into my arm. It's like a, transfusion thing that basically like sedated me for like three days because over Christmas I'd hired someone and um, previously Christmas and their performance was so poor and they were lying to me about things and there's nothing I could do and they were pulling all the cards out right and um, it was just for them it was probably just like a bunch of little white lies and constantly just like whatever they had going on in their own life right but it just really, really, really got to me. Like it, I couldn't, you know how I said in a previous recording that there was like one person in a team can make up for nine other people of stress. That's what happened. 
And um, I just kept on getting it to me, getting to me. And then the stress of the business and then coming back after Christmas without having a break really. And day one, some one of our news team members from Sydney actually, he was like, he joined us that day. And um, I was up watering the garden at like 7.30 in the morning. By nine o'clock, I was in the ED at hospital. And um, it turned out they believed that I had a severe panic attack that led to a migraine, which I've never had before. That just knocked me out. Like I couldn't see. I went blurry vision. Funniest thing in the world happened. You guys are going to love this. So I was lying on the couch and my wife was there and she was like, because she thought like this is like the, like he could be having like some sort of brain trauma or something's going on. You can't see. He's like, like, I couldn't open my eyes. Like it was really weird. Anyway, I was losing my hair at the time. And there's a joke here in the notes of the Google Doc that we're working on. <laughs> if you sweep things under the rug, you'll end up with no hair. And this is legit, like, a uh, thing. So I was sitting there. I was lying there, like, on the couch. And I had this hair supplement that I got from, like, a compound pharmacy. It was, like, a natural, like… Can you give take- that to me after? <laughs> it's just, like, a tablet. It doesn't… As you'll hear, it doesn't solve all the problems. And it's just, like, it's a capsule, right? Like, it's, like, a clear capsule. And by this stage, I was lying on the couch. And it was in my pocket. I hadn't taken it that day. You're supposed to have, like, one or two a day. I don't know talk to your doctor <laughs> so anyway I was sitting there and the micro paramedics the actual paramedics everyone's there in the room and I'm like dead on my back basically and they come in they've got all their like uh, ambulance bags and whatever and they're standing over me and this cat falls out of my pocket <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and oh, they're thinking man. this guy <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here a young male he's like had a massive weekend yeah. and he's come back on the Monday morning he's wrecked yeah. and this is some sort of drugs that fell out of his pocket and my wife's like this is my wife under pressure like knowing <laughs> sensing the situation she goes oh it's it's, it's our Panadol <laughs> But the thing is, everyone knows it's not Panadol. Panadol doesn't look like that. <laughs> Panadol doesn't come in a clear capsule. So it made it worse. Yeah. The Panadol and the made old, it worse. I didn't have my eyes open, but I'm pretty sure I can see the facial expression on the old <laughs> Ambo, the Micah, who was like scrunched up face like, mm, okay, let's test him for drug use. <laughs> but um, yeah, so what happened was I ended up, I, yeah, they put the stuff in me when I got to the hospital. They didn't know what was wrong. They did all the scans, like MRIs and all that. And... The real reason, there was two contributing factors, but the biggest one was the stress that I was under at work from this employee. Like it was genuinely this employee. And I had to let go of them later on. Um, it just wasn't working. And by the time, you know, it came around, they knew it was coming. Yeah. So that was a couple of years ago. What have you done differently to stop that happening again for you personally? I just don't. Now it's, my hiring process is so much slower, but better. I'm just so deliberate. Like I don't make, everyone says this, but I don't make mistakes anymore. I need to know everything about the person before they join the team, like literally everything. And if there's even the faintest sniff of uncertainty, they are not coming on board. It's not because they might not be great. I just can't do it anymore. Like I just literally cannot give myself to that. And has that reduced sort of the firing component because you're so confident with the candidates coming through, you don't really have to fire anyone or go through that terrible process? Yeah, well, you know how, like I said, that like in a previous episode that uh, I don't, I'm not a very good manager. It's not that I'm, I wouldn't say if I was looking at myself, it's not that I'm not a good manager. I just don't like to do it. So if someone comes in and they want absolute autonomy, they've got it. So it's basically like the gate, like into the paddock. I just open the gate and just let them run in and do whatever they want. And if they want someone to like herd them around and do things, that this is not the right place. So just making sure that they're the right person to let in, but then also that I like that they're clear about what I do and don't do. And that's just is what it is. Like it's not for everyone, but it's for me. And this is an extreme example of not making a hard decision quickly because, I mean, I can't get too personal on the things that they were doing, but it was just literally everything that made it impossible for me to make a hard decision quickly was was pulled on me. So it made it really hard. So that's my story. So first one was like personal expenditures, like a money waster. The second one is not making hard decisions. And this can be on strategies as well. It doesn't have to be people. So like marketing strategies, it could be like projects or things that are underway. So that's another one. But number three, who wants to tackle number three? Third money waster. Yeah, overstaffing. 
So there's a few components to this one. I think we've mentioned it in a previous episode where we're comparing hiring a senior or a tradesman or whatever industry you're in, someone who's got that experience as opposed to hiring a junior who's relatively fresh. Yep. I don't want to say it's a money waster in hiring a junior because sometimes it is the right fit. Like an apprentice. Exactly, exactly. Because you're investing the time and energy to build them up to what they need to be. But again, it's very specific on the stage you're at in business. You know, if you need someone to hit the ground running, you need to hire a senior. Yep. You can't hire a junior because it's not going to be the right fit. You're probably going to go backwards if anything. Mm. So it's really important that when you are hiring, you're hiring for the correct role and you don't want to overstaff either because that becomes very expensive very quickly. Mm. If you're hiring because there's an anticipation that you're going to win a big job or sign a big contract and that falls through, but you've already hired for it, like that can be disastrous. Mm. So you've got to be very careful about um, overstaffing and then hiring the right staff as well. Yeah, and getting people in isn't going to guarantee growth. You know, just having someone, just hiring a senior even, isn't going to guarantee that they're going to be more revenue or more efficiency. You still got to win the work with whatever you're selling. There's still got to be a workflow coming through. So just getting people in ready to work isn't a strategy. There needs to be some type of lead generation happening in order to keep up with it. You can't just hire someone and expect profits to start rolling through. Yeah, 100%. So when you guys say sit down at the beginning of the year, do you guys do like an annual review for yourselves? Yeah, yeah, and quarterly. Yeah. So when you sit down and do these things, are you guys like, all right, this is kind of where we're going. We talked about business planning. Like this is kind of where we're going and this is the person that we want to do this thing. Like do you have like a, ro- I guess, do you have a roadmap of the people that need to be along that journey with you? Yeah, we do. And we base ours off probably revenue. Yeah. You know, we expect X, Y, Z staff members to be able to manage X amount of fees. So that's the method that we use. And we, we plan that out from the start. So once we get to a certain amount of revenue, we know when to pull the trigger to get that certain person in, yeah. whether yeah. they're a senior, whether it's a, a junior or an overseas staff member, mm. we know at any point when we need that next person. Yeah. Who's next on your list? Maladasa? Yeah, of course. Probably a, a manager or a senior. Like yeah. an operations slash? Yeah, for us, it's a bit, that's something we, we're still sort of working out. Because we're hiring at the moment, we have like um, a couple of overseas people and a, a senior accountant as well as Daniel and myself. We're hiring around getting the work out and like the output. Yep. So we don't really have like an operations manager just yet or anything like that. It's Daniel and I wearing, sharing the load between finance, marketing, sales and operations. So yeah. So the next hire is probably going to be an intermediate or a senior pending. We want this person to fit the culture. There is not that big of a pool of great candidates that would fit nicely for us. So for us, it's important getting someone that shares our values, our purpose, the culture, because they will ultimately create sort of the environment for everyone to work with. So we want to assist our staff as best we can. So at the moment, we've got a great senior accountant and we want to give him the resources to continue producing the product. So sometimes it's hiring to help your hire if that makes sense, giving them the resources to continue excelling. So for us, it's either an intermediate or a senior accountant, whoever's going to fit the mold the best personally. Mm. So if you're an accountant and you're listening to this, you're based in and around Sydney, get in touch with Grace Base Advisory. These two gents are looking, they're on the the lookout for talented people. So, um, and that's, yeah, that's actually interesting. Like I, I feel like, if you are listening to this, just give them a give them a call. See what they're up to. So overstaffing is a huge issue. Just I think any plan is good, but if you're stuck on like what is my plan for my business, maybe something you got to do is just take that time. That these guys obviously do it quarterly, which is great. I definitely do it at least annually, normally half yearly. Like I sit down and write an email to myself. I kind think of we do a big one annually, and then within that annual one, we set the targets for our quarterlies and we're just checking where we're going and adjusting, pivoting if we have to. So mm. it's more of like a an assess and reevaluate on those quarterlies after our big annual one. Our big annual one goes for like two days straight. Yeah. We base it off we base our system off um, traction by Gino which we spoke yeah, about yeah. Yeah. Gino uh, Wickman. So we base it off of his theory. Yeah. And if, strategy. If business owners don't know where to start with the strategy, the goal setting Reading Traction is a very good start. All right. There'll be a link in the show notes to Traction. 
Um, I'll put also a link in the show notes to the interview I did with Brett Kelly, who's another accountant. And he's talked about like he had something very similar where he talked about like his kind of like, he has this like life plan, if you like, and it's broken down into like years and then months and then weeks. And he has like classic account and he's got it like in a spreadsheet and then he like prints it off and has it on his desk every year. Like he has it up above his desk so he can see it. He's like ticking off things. Just anything like that is kind of cool. So uh, that'll be in the show notes. Please go and check that out. Um, so just to recap, the three biggest money ways that we've identified, there are many, many, many others and they're kind of intertwined. It's like personal expenditure. But maybe don't go and buy that Tesla using your business bank account. If you're so inclined, pay yourself more and, uh, and go and buy it. Uh, number two is making or failing to make the hard and fast decisions that you need to make. I was saying about hiring. Higher, slow, fire, fast. Higher, slow, fire, fast. I hope I've got that right. <laughs> so it's just gonna go You're not saying thing. it very confident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and number three is overstaffing. So that's the final one. If you are a small or medium business and you want to get some advice, reach out to the team at Grace Space Advisory. Daniel and Jordan, there's a link in the show notes to their website, a landing page, their setup. You can get a business health check from these guys. Uh, they'll go through your bank accounts or your structures, and you can just fire all of the questions I didn't get to in this podcast. If you like the show, let us know. Leave a re- kind review if you do so, please, in Apple or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget, you can ask us questions. There's a link in the show notes for that as well as our business course, free business course. Uh, you can check out There's a bunch of documents and whatever there. Gents, Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Australian Business Podcast. I think this series is best served with my free business course on RASC education. My free course includes all of my notes, templates, employment guides, legal documents, marketing strategies, software recommendation, and ideas for starting and running a small business. If you're a small business owner or an expert like an accountant, lawyer, investor, or entrepreneur, I want to hear from you. I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do with this podcast series, so I'm looking for sponsors as well as potential co-hosts, and of course, I'm eager to invest in businesses run by talented people. If you're looking for a supporter or advisor, a silent partner, or even an investor to support your growth, I can help. Please contact me via the Rask website. Finally, if this podcast or the course helps you, I only ask that you please help me by sharing it with one friend, colleague, or family member who runs a business. Thanks for listening. This episode of the Australian Business Podcast is proudly supported by Rumble Coffee Roasters. Rumble Coffee Roasters is dedicated to helping you drink better coffee. Knockout blends, world-class, single origins, bold espressos, and flavor-filled filter roasts. Rumble Coffee prides itself on personal relationships with producers and customers alike. They pay farmers fairly so that they can invest in their land, their employees, and their communities. You can buy some beans to drink at home via rumblecoffee.com.au. That's R-U-M-B-L-E coffee.com.au. Or if you're a coffee shop owner, get in touch and discover better ways to serve your customers. Tell them Rask sent you. This episode is proudly supported by Rask Core. Rask Core is our all-in-one membership service designed to help you get the most from your money. Complete with research on ETFs, individual shares, bank accounts, term deposits, and so much more. Over 4,000 people are part of the Rascor community, and it is growing every week. To learn why more investors choose Rascor, head to www.rask.com.au slash subscriptions to find out more.